Well, I suppose ever since I can remember, if something moved, I'm interested. It started off with trains, cars, and it just went from there. Um, I remember, I think it was my parents took me to the Blue Bell Railway when I was probably like absolutely teeny. And from there, it was I wanted model trains, wanted to see trains absolutely everywhere I went. I'd, I'd be in the street and I'd just be looking at cars and trains and anything that came along. You know, over a bridge or whatever I was interested more so in some cases than my own family if my dad had stopped me in the street to say hello I'd be in the push chair and uh, not interested in dad it was uh, oh look there's a class 47 going over there um, so always been interested in railways always been interested in anything that moves shopping experience for Hattons goes back to before I even had my own bank account so Christmas presents, I would want a model of this or a model of that and my parents would be uh, hounded and hounded and hounded into getting it and my parents, my grandparents, they always bought stuff from Hattons, it always turned up from Hattons and uh, then I started working, I got my first job, got my first paycheck and the very first thing I did with it was I went straight onto Hattons and I bought an intercity mainline liveried 47 and six Mark 1s to go with it and that was my first paycheck. <laughs> Um, and from there, I've always just bought stuff from Hattons. It's a very easy website to navigate. It always tells you what's in stock, which is the best thing for me. I know exactly how many of whatever it is that you have. Um, order it, and within a couple of days, it's on the layout, and I'm using it. Um, in terms of the Hattons original stuff, I've um, got a lot of exciting stuff coming along now, even down to basic stuff like the oil spill kit, the ballasts, and scenery things. Um, Probably the favourite would be uh, the 66, just because of how much of a game changer of a model it is. I mean, the, the current accepted Backman 66 is now over 10 years old, and this new 66 from Hattons has just knocked the detail out of the park. So I look forward to seeing what comes along in the future, and uh, more stuff from the 1980s, please, and uh, I'll spend some more money. <laughs> yeah, so formation guides. Formations is something that I've always been really interested in, and it's something that nobody models. You'll buy a model of a, a Black 5, or you'll buy a model of a 47, whatever locomotive it is, and then you buy an assortment of approximate stock, stick it behind it on the layout, and run it. But nine times out of ten, it's not a prototypical formation, it never ran anywhere, and it was never photographed. When I've been doing Everard Junction, I've always tried to get a, uh, a prototypical formation and the research is surprisingly difficult. You'll find most enthusiasts photograph or film the locomotive going past and you might see the first two or three coaches. The rest of the rake is just lost in the pages of history. So for Hattons to come along now and do the hard work for you by actually saying, right, here's the model, but here's what it ran with and when and where, that's huge. And you can make your model really, really accurate which is something I've always tried to do with Everard Junction, but it's a lot of research, so for Hattons to do it now, it makes it very accessible. I've even found myself browsing through the lists. I mean, you did the, uh, you did the one showing what uh, formations are running past Alexandra Palace through the years, and it was really interesting to see what formations going right back to the 1940s were running through. And straight away, you know what coaches you need, what locomotive you need, is there any special uh, things you need to take account to, you know, where's the placement of the brake coach, what sort of freight have you got? It's very powerful stuff and it all just adds to make that model more realistic. In terms of models that I'm looking forward to, for me it's the Backman Class 117 diesel multiple unit. As someone who models the Western region, especially the Great Western Main Line, it is an absolute must for me as a modeler. I've been waiting patiently for a long time, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, in terms of the layouts, I'm keen to see a lot of the layouts, as quite a few of them I haven't actually seen before. I had a quick look through the list and a lot of them I haven't seen before. So. It's going to be really interesting as in a lot of the stuff I haven't seen before and it's nice to go to a show and it's not the same old layouts all the time. It's always nice to have a fresh selection of layouts. What's your favourite loco? Uh, flipping heck. Um, I mean it depends. It depends so much because I mean like the, you know, the, the obvious choice is like you know class 47 because it was Britain's most numerous loco with you know, over 500 examples ever built. Um, but then you've got like the 37, which is arguably the most dependable loco that we ever had built and went everywhere as well. And then you've got the iconic stuff like the HST, many would argue it saved British Rail. Um, and then you've got game changing stuff like the 91, which revolutionised travel on the, uh, the East Coast mainline. Um, picking a favourite, that's very difficult. I'd probably say it would be, I'd narrow it down to two, and it would be the 47 or the 56. 
and that's as close as you're going to get it from me. 56 always liked it as it's a little bit like a, a 47 on steroids and it was the first proper model I ever bought. 47 just because you can never have too many 47s on a layout. That's probably where I'd go. But that, that is an impossible question to answer.